Hi guys and welcome to another video. Now today's video is a little bit different than my normal videos. Today's video I'm going to be looking at a laser cutter. Now what I want to do with this laser cutter is I want to do quite a big project. Well in fact I'm going to do two projects. The first project is I want to extend my office with this Death Star wall that I made in the past. All of this was CNC'd out before but what I want to do is see if I can actually make a similar project extending the wall out this way that you can't see off camera and actually cutting the panels using the laser cutter in my own home. And the second part of the project, which will be part B of this video, what I want to do in that is I want to actually do some things to my servers. I want to customize them a bit and customize the server cabinet a bit by making custom plaques engraving into metal. So each of my three servers in the server cabinet, the other side of the room there, I want to have special plaques with the specs, the IP address, and all that kind of thing on there. I want to see if I can make my servers look a little bit nicer. Now, full disclosure, I did get sent the laser cutter by Creality, but all of the opinions about it are my own. The reason I really like this laser cutter is because it's fully enclosed. All of the fumes that you normally get when you cut various materials, obviously the laser burns the materials as it cuts, that makes smoke and fumes. So because the laser cutter is fully enclosed, well, all of that gets sucked out through extraction and you don't breathe any of the nasty fumes in. And also, you can actually see through the enclosure, it's made of this red sort of perspexy material and it's made of the same material that laser cutter safety glasses are made from so you can actually see the laser working without damaging your eyes. Probably still not a good idea just to stare at the laser, you know, that's just daft, but you know, it's really nice to be able to see what's going on. Now, I've built quite a few laser cutters in the past myself. You know, I've had two or three laser cutters before this one, and so I'm quite used to building them. Now, I heard that the Corality Falcon 2 Pro is really easy to build. So I thought I'd test that theory by not me building it, but I'd get my son to build it. Now, of course, it's nothing to do with me being lazy. I don't want to build it myself. It's all in the name of science, seeing how long it takes a beginner to put this laser cutter together. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to make this video boring. It's not going to be about how to assemble the laser cutter and then what sort of materials can it cut. There's plenty of videos on YouTube that will show you just that. I will show you obviously being built, but I promise I'm going to condense that down to 30 seconds just so we can see the assembly process. But this video is going to be more fun, just showing how to do a random cool nerdy project with a laser cutter at home, building something bigger than just cutting out something like a Christmas ornament. Anyway, let's have a look at the laser cutter being built and then we'll start with the project. The laser cutter comes very well packaged with each thing in a different layer inside of the box, everything well protected. And you can see here now my son building the laser cutter at full speed. It's very nice that the gantry and the belt and all of those kind of difficult bits are already pre-assembled. The hardest bit is obviously putting these red pieces of perspex in and building the enclosure. That's pretty much the only bit you actually have to do. What you can see him doing here with those metal pieces is lying them across the bed. These are used instead of a honeycomb for actually laser cutting onto. And underneath that there's a removable tray which is used for cleaning debris after doing cuts. Okay, so now you can see I've come into the scene to inspect his work. Sorry, I mean help him. And so here's the finished product from the back. We can see the extraction hose there coming out the side. Here's the front at the bottom there. You can see the removable tray. As you'd expect on the front, safety features, a set of keys to turn it on and off and an emergency stop button. Okay, so I'm going to move the laser cutter up into my maker space and we can see it in situ here. The little grey box to the left of the cutter there, that's its air assist pump. Using air assist greatly improves the quality of your laser cutting. Really an essential feature to have on any decent laser cutter. Now there's another really killer feature for me that is really cool about this laser cutter. We can't really see it from here. If I zoom in, actually let's cut to another picture that was during the build. You can see here this centralised built-in camera. Now this looks down on the bed of the cutter and you can view the camera from within the Lightburn software. After you've run through a wizard to calibrate the camera, you can overlay what the camera sees into the Lightburn software onto the actual grid that you're actually putting the builds on. So it's really easy to line things up and know exactly where you're cutting on the bed. Anyway, before we do the actual Death Star wall, let's chuck some wood on and do a couple of tests. Of course, they've got to be Star Wars tests. 
I'm going to first cut out a Death Star, which we can see here. Now what I'm doing here is I'm tracing the outline, it's a function in Lightburn, just traces the outline of an image and then I'm setting here the actual power and speed I want to cut so it actually cuts it right through the wood. Okay so the laser's hard at work making us the Death Star. Now obviously this is highly sped up, it takes a lot longer than what you can see here in the video. So that's done, the Death Star's been cut out of the wood. If I remove the actual Death Star out there you can see what's left over. So the Death Star was a plane like laser cut out of the wood. Now let's do an engrave and then cut out the engraving afterwards. To demo that I'm using this nice image here of an AT-80 walker and there's a line around the edge that will cut it out after it's been engraved. Now you can see here it's going to take quite a long time, four hours to do this. It is a big image and there's a lot of engraving. Okay so four hours later it's engraved and cut out. You can see me removing it here. If I put it into the light inside the laser here you can see it a little bit better. But let me prepare the two things we've just made and I'll show you them properly. Okay guys so I think I've used the last of my wood on those test projects but I'll just show you what they're like. So the first one we did was like a Death Star cutout and I'm not sure quite how well you can see on the camera this here. This is the cutout basically just lasered around the edge and cut through the wood. I've painted it obviously the other side with the plain wood here and that's the other side but I painted it grey. I'm not quite sure what colour I'll end up doing the whole thing in the end. So that's that one and the 8080 Walker, well this was actually a laser engrave and if you can see here there's a lot more texture on it. Like all of the woods like burnt down and these bits actually all stand out. So it's a really nice thing to be able to do, to be able to actually engrave into wood. I think it does a really nice effect there. Um, I would actually paint this but I think you kind of lose a lot of the texture. I like these bits here. You know, maybe, I don't know if I put kind of Vaseline on here or something and then sprayed it, then I might be able to wipe that off and still see the raised bits of wood in the white. Anyway, like I said, I think I used the last of my wood, so I'm going to go and check if I've got any more. If not, I'm going to have to get some. Okay guys, so I'm off to the local DIY store called B&Q where I'm going to buy some 5mm ply. Um, it's pretty cool because they cut it to whatever size you want, so I'm going to get some cut for the size of the bed. Hey cool, so I've arrived at the store. Now to find the wood, it's right at the back of the store here, so I have to walk down through past a few aisles. Now here's the wood, um, lots of different ply here. Now the bit I actually chose, I think it was a bit too small, and to be honest I came back and got a larger bit and got that cut as well. Now this is the saw here, really awesome, they actually cut things for you and this guy very kindly was happy to be on a video to actually show us the saw working, so that was pretty cool. Now each of these cuts the guy's making, he's making me panels that are the right size that will fit inside the laser cutter. They're slightly bigger than the build area because that's what I need for this project. This is an off cut I'm having cut into 400mm wide pieces. I really hate throwing things away and I figure I can probably use this for something else. Okay then, let's pay and get out of here. Okay, so back at home here, I've stacked up the wood in front of the Falcon 2 Pro. Now, one thing I think I really should mention is if you are buying ply from the DIY store, always be really careful of what glues the ply is actually made from. I know in some countries, you know, they can be quite lax with actual what sort of glues are allowed to be put in ply, and when some of them burn well, they can give off toxic fumes. Well, over here in Europe, we have pretty strict rules on this kind of thing and the enclosure and extraction with the Falcon 2 Pro is really good, so I'm pretty safe. Right, so now let's move and take a look at where I'm going to put this new Death Star wall. So to the right of my desk at the top here, this is where I'm going to actually put the new Death Star wall. Before I just put some cutouts from the other wall here, just to kind of fill it in and make it look a bit similar. 
and the width of this is 1220 millimeters wide and the correct height to make it match the panel above the door coming into the room is 500 millimeters high so obviously this is going to be the size that i have to make my design and to make my design i'm going to use photoshop now i know probably a lot of people will say illustrator is better to use but i'm comfortable with photoshop it's what i know how to use best so i'm going to use that so here in photoshop i've made the canvas size the same size as what i measured on the wall 122 centimeters wide by 50 centimeters tall now the falcon 2 pro's cutting area is 400 millimeters wide by 415 millimeters high but we can fit material into the build area that's much bigger than this so we can actually fit in say 500 mil by 500 mil but we're only going to be able to cut the 400 by 415 well actually this is perfect let's bring up a calculator a moment so 122 centimeters divided by three so that's going to be 40.6 centimeters wide or 406 mils wide now that's the exact width that i had the panels cut just a moment ago in b and q they were 406 wide by 500 mils tall so it'll take three of these to make the death star wall okay so we know how wide this is it's going to be three of these panels wide so now we need to see the cutting area and these blue squares here these are the cutting area that the laser can do so by placing these here i can know where the cuts are going to be on the death star wall and i can see how it's going to look so if we look here at a picture of the part of the Death Star wall that I'm copying, I measured all of these parts. So from the top to the first oval shape, that was 50 centimeters. And so I made a shape to scale to represent that as well. And if I switch that layer on here, we can see it represented here. So I know at the bottom of this part here, that's where my top oval shapes have to start from. So the cuts need to start there right on the top of the blue. Now I've got some oval shapes already made and I'm going to switch them on here but they're just not to scale so I'm going to have to adjust them. So what I did is I measured the height and width of each of the oval shapes and I represented them here with these yellow rectangles. So now all I have to do now is to adjust the size of each of these ovals to fit the size of these rectangles. I had measured the distance between each of the ovals on the original and so I'm going to fit it here to match and then just duplicate them and I can fit four on one panel and I think that looks pretty nice. So now I just need to convert one of these panels to be a template for all of the rest. Okay, so that's done. But back over on Lightburn, we're going to have a bit of a problem because this file is actually a PNG file, so it's an image file. And a vector image would give us really nice clean lines. Because if we do what we did before and trace the image, You'll see what will happen is basically if we zoom into the lines it will have actually traced either side of those lines because they weren't one pixel wide. So what I'm going to do I'm going to use a free Adobe online tool to convert this into an SVG file. So it just takes about 30 seconds to convert and with that downloaded let's go back across to the laser cutter. So this piece of wood here I cut out basically as a spacer so I can butt up the other panels against it each time so they're always in the same position. Right, so with the wood in place let's do the first cut. Now it's hard to see here but the actual overlay of the camera is on. In the top right hand corner you can actually see the laser module but it's hard to see the wood because the wood's bigger than the build area and obviously the wood is a light colour. Anyway let's get these panels cut and settings i'm using i'm using 390 mils per minute 100 percent power i'm going to do two passes just to be sure and obviously i'm going to turn on air assist and it says it's going to be about 14 minutes to cut each panel okay great the first one's done and it's looking good right so let's get this one painted Okay, so one, two, three. Okay, so with the primer done, it's definitely beginning to take shape. I just need to make the frame to stick all of these together into one piece.
Okay, so the frame's almost done and that's what it looks like on the other side. And here it's got another coat of paint. So obviously I need some translucent perspex to better diffuse the light through. So I need to fix that to the inside of the frame. And to do that I used a solvent free no more nails style glue. Okay, so this is what it looks like with the perspex on. It looks pretty cool I think. Okay, so I just need to get it on the wall now. Obviously I have to prepare the wall, get the old things off the wall. Also on the wall behind where the panel's going to be, I'm sticking a load of silver foil here so it reflects as much light back from the LEDs, making the panel as bright as possible. Now talking about LEDs, I use Govi LEDs. I use them because they're much cheaper than Philips Hue and they integrate fully into Home Assistant because all of this I can control from that. Okay, so all of the hard work's done, so let me show you the final result. Now, I'm really happy with this. To be honest, I'm really blown away by it. I didn't think I'd actually better do it, um, making these with the laser, but it's come out really, really well. So, do I like the Falcon 2 Pro? Yep, I absolutely love it. I think it's an awesome laser cutter, definitely the best one I've ever had. My favourite things about it is how easy it is to put together. All of the major working parts are already pre-assembled. That's really awesome. And I love the fact that this laser is fully enclosed. The enclosure is all built in. The laser cutter I had before this one was open frame and I built my own enclosure. Whilst that did get rid of some of the fumes, I still like to keep a window open. But with the Creality Falcon 2 Pro, its built-in enclosure is 10 times better than the one I made myself. My maker space is up on the mezzanine area in my office, and I've got the laser cutter venting into an air extraction system that goes straight through the wall to outside. And in the main part of my office, when the laser's working, I can't really smell any burning wood or anything at all. Now if I go up into my maker space and I'm just a couple of feet away from the laser while it's working, then yep, I can like smell a bit of a burn. But if I'm down in my main office space 20 feet away, if it wasn't for the sound of the laser, well, I wouldn't actually know it was turned on. I also really love the camera. Now I didn't really use it in this part of the video. You'll be seeing me using it in part B when I do all the engraving to make the custom server parts. But by having a camera, it just allows you to really easily line things up on things you've put onto the cutting bed. Anyway guys, I think that pretty much wraps up this part anyway. Now, I know it was very different this video, but I really hope you enjoyed it. You know, it was a good bit of fun making the Death Star wall. And don't worry, there's plenty of Unraid tutorials coming. But for now, thanks very much for watching. And whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you in the next video.